Hey guys, welcome back to the Golang with Postgres project series. We have to do a little bit of cleanup out here. So we need our config. Let's create config. So we'll say config variable is equal to ampersand storage. Storage being our package that we just created in the last video. Storage.config, config being the struct that we created in the previous video. And here we'll say, We'll have to basically uh, get the value of all the things. All the things being the host, port, and all of those things, right? So here we'll say host, and then we'll have our port, okay? We'll have our password, our user, our SSL mode, and our So for host, we'll use the OS package, get environment, db underscore host. For here, we'll use our OS package again, get environment, db underscore port. For password, we'll use os.get environment, db underscore password. And for user, we'll have again os.get environment db underscore user. And SSL mode os.get environment db underscore SSL mode. Here we'll have os.get environment db underscore name. So put the commas where it's pending get the OS package, press save. Okay. So it's trying to save and then I'm expecting it to be able to, uh, as in all the extensions that I have, I have now, they were able to get, uh, understand that models and storage are basically these packages that I'm talking about. I was going to do this manually, but it's good that uh, the extensions did it for me. It was, they were able to get the models and storage packages imported from the right places for me. Okay. To get rid of these quick lines quickly, what we can do is we can run go mod tidy. And it'll keep getting all those packages in the background. Okay, so you don't have to worry about it. What we have to worry about is in the main dot go file, there need to be two more functions, which is the delete book and the get book by ID. So let's work on the uh, delete book function quickly. So let's come here and say func delete book. Now we know it's not just a function, it's actually a struct method. So we have to say R repository. So we'll have access to the repository through R. Takes in context, which is of type fiber.cdx. And you will get back an error from here. So here uh, we'll define a variable called book model, which is of type models.books. And we'll have uh, an ID which is context.params ID. Now the beauty with uh, Fiverr, right? So let me explain to you a little bit about that. So if you've seen my earlier videos where I've not used any um, any framework like Gen or Fiverr or G, I've just used the HTTP uh, package, then you, you had to wrangle a lot or struggle a lot to get access to the params, right? It's not like you have to write a lot of stuff to access the params. Even though it's not complicated, but there's, there's work involved, right? But with uh, context, right, with fiber, you get very easy access to uh, params, which is basically ID params out here. And you get access to the request and response very easily. So that's basically, uh, so it, so this, the fiber package or uh, the, the fra framework, as they call it, the fiber framework, uh, in the background is just, like a layer on top of your HTTP package. It's, there's no magic going on, right? It's just giving a lot of, lot of abstraction to you, but at the back end, it's, that's what it's all doing. It's basically converting your code to uh, work with the HTTP package. Anyhow, 
Here we'll check if ID is empty string. Right. So I use these frameworks like Fiber, Gen, Gen and all that, but I only use them because I know uh, at the base level how to how to still build a program without uh, using any frameworks. So if you want to be a really good Golang developer, um, you don't have to use all these third party frameworks and fr frameworks and you should be able to build things just by using what Golang gives you. And that's when you'll understand things from a really deep level. So you say context dot status HTTP dot uh, status internal server error dot JSON. You say fiber dot map. And here you will say message. The ID cannot be empty. Okay. So things like fiber dot map, things like how to access the context. Uh, always have the fiber documentation open with you. So whenever I'm working with, let's say, something external like, like GORM or fiber, I always have the documentation open uh, with me, right? I'm not, I'm never, am I flying blind? So that's a good practice. So always when you're building programs, don't try to guess, don't try to uh, use your own mind, don't try to assume things, just open up the documentation and actually pick up stuff from there. It's not a problem. It's not a problem to pick up stuff from the documentation, okay? Uh, then this delete method is you have access to R, which is your repository, access to DB. And you'll use the delete method. And you'll pass book model comma ID. ID being what you've received in this API. And let's handle the error. So if error dot error is not equal to many. Context dot status HTTP dot status bad request and here you'll say fiber dot map message would not delete book comma and here you'll return error dot errors. And then let's put context dot status, HTTP dot status, okay dot. So if everything goes well, you can just say a, say send a successful message, something like this. Book added, uh, sorry, deleted successfully. And you return. Right. Nil means the error, so there's no error, so we'll return nil for the error. Otherwise, we have been returning error till now everywhere. So book deleted successfully. So I'll leave this video here. And uh, in the next video, we're supposed to be working with our get book by ID function. And then we'll also try and test, test this program through Postman.